I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. sacred night and I think to myself what a wonderful world what a wonderful world Lord of heaven of all creation of water, earth, and sky Heavens are your tabernacles Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. To the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah. To the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah. To the Lord of heaven and earth, joy to the world. of the storm you are there and we thank you that you've told us what to think on in the word of God and we thank you Father that we can think on those good things that you have blessed us with for this time that we can spend together in the presence of God Almighty as a family as your family 
I pray now as we bring the word of God, it shall build up all of our faith. And we honor you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn, if you will, turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And uh, Hallelujah. And let's start with verse 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. I've learned that every word of God is full of power. And I've learned that as we do it, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the problems of life, and obey it, it will yield good fruit. Look at that scripture on the board up there. Rejoice in the Lord always. Hmm. Does God expect us to rejoice when things aren't going like we would like them to go? I remember when God was teaching me this lesson when things weren't going so good for me and Susan. But I began to meditate on that. Delight, gladden yourself. Someone said, if I could just get glad. Look what it says. Gladden yourself in him. It's up to us to get glad. Not bad, but glad. Gladden yourself by rejoicing in the Lord in the difficult times. Now, if you know the Word of God, even if you face death, you know the word of God. He that believeth in me shall never perish, shall never die. We have eternal life. And so when things are rough, and I've had things rough financially, I've had things rough in a lot of different areas of my life. And as I would meditate on the word of God, and I thought about Jesus, when he was being tempted by the enemy, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I said, you know, that's proceed, that word, rejoice. Because within that word, as you start rejoicing, your spirit man picks that up. See, you're a spirit being, and you've got to feed your spirit man. And if your spirit man is down, a wounded spirit, who can bear I want to say that again. A wounded spirit, who can bear? And the devil will try to wound your spirit, and you can't bear nothing. Everything looks sour. It looks cloudy. But you can gladden yourself by rejoicing. And I still remember what uh, Doris up here I will magnify the Lord. I will give the Lord glory. Devil, you took my son, but I, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. I will rejoice in the Lord. That's how you break the negative powers of hell in your life. Let me tell you something, saints. It's a war. It's not going to be fuzzy, fuzzy all the time. There's times when people are going to talk about you. There's times when people are going to call you up on the phone and say all kind of ugly stuff. I've had it all in my day, more than one time, many times. But I'm clear on the inside, Rick. I'm free on the inside. Because I've learned to gladden myself in the Lord by rejoicing in the Lord. Wow, the power of rejoicing. It is all through the scriptures. Look at verse 5. Let all men know and perceive and recognize 
your unselfishness, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. Boy, to have a forbearing spirit. You know, I used to try to make all those things happen in my life, but I've learned to trust the Lord to do the work in me. <sighs> that if I can leave anything to the body of Christ, in your own self, you can't do it. But you rely upon Him to do it inside of you. How can somebody l lose a million dollars and rejoice. My goodness, if I lose my bubble gum, I mean, I'll just have a fit. <laughs> so I'm asking you a question. Have you learned to get in that mode to be a person that rejoices 24-7? Because it will put a shield up around you that the enemy can't break through. They just found, I was reading this on the internet, they just found that the earth has another shield around it, an invisible shield. There was one here around the earth, another one was around, but further out, another shield. They found a third shield that protects this earth from a lot of things and radiation and all that comes from the uh, universe to bombard this earth to protect us. And I'm telling you, when you have, whoo, glory to God, when you have that shield of rejoicing, put a third shield. Some of you don't have that third shield. You need to put that third shield operating in your life, and you need to begin to rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Go ahead. I dare you to do it. Just rejoice. Tell the devil he was beat at Calvary. Because everything ain't going to be fuzzy, fuzzy all the time. But God says rejoice. Because see, if you let your spirit get sour, if you let your spirit get bitter, the Bible talks about a bitter spirit. If you let your spirit get contaminated with this old world, this is why when I'm out in the world, I've got to come and wash my spirit out. Because you know yourself, it's just like Rick was discerning when he was turned that radio on. See, I discern the same thing. Say, you're right on track. I love the man, but there's a negative spirit behind it. See, you can hear somebody, but when you discern that negative spirit, you know the devil is operating. And as men and uh, women of God, we stand against that type of stuff, and sometimes you just got to get away from it. Bad company corrupts good morals. Remember that, kids? Daddy, why don't you want me to hang around that kid? I know he has a negative attitude because, son, a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. You hang around that negative boy, you will become negative, and your attitude will change towards God, and you almost say, well, I think I'm an atheist. And you know where you got it from? Somebody else out there that has a spirit of negativism and it's come on you. And you're going to have to learn to rejoice to get it off of you. Get it off. See, it's spiritual. Spirit to spirit. Intellect to intellect. Flesh to flesh. Spirit to spirit. Somebody talks to me, I can tell you instantly. Instantly. If they're poisoned with the world. If they're poisoned with a negative spirit. How many can do that? Let's see your hand. Sure you can. If you're walking in the Spirit, you can discern that. Now, you don't put the people down. You pray for them. But you don't hang around them too much either because they'll poison you. Fighting the good fight of faith. Look, look what Paul is saying now. Look at verse 6. Put verse 6 up there. A lot I could say about that, but I want to move on to get to the goodies. <clears throat> Verse 6. Do not fret. Do 
Someone says, I, I, I can't help it. Yes, you can. If you're born again, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Well, Bob, you don't know. No, 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 no wait a minute. I'm almost 82. You don't know what I've gone through, and I don't have time to explain it, and I don't want to explain it. But I know. Don't fret, because it'll contaminate your spirit. It'll contaminate people around you. Fretting, fretting, always fretting. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Oh, my goodness, sit down, Bob. I believe it will. Do you think God's going to tell us something that we can't do? True, in one way, because we can't do it on our own power. If you're connected into the, into the 220 power, you can do it. I know we've heard this and probably continue to hear it that Jesus comes. But how you respond to something will determine how it's going to affect you. Powerful. How we respond to something. Let me see if I can get a, a respond out of this a little bit. I want to check the congregation out on this. Would you hold this, son, right here? You, you take this, right? You got it? You got it? See, if, see how your brother responds to that? Yeah, see how? Yeah, see how? You're not scared of that? Okay. How about you? You scared of that? Give it to you. <laughs> now give it to your dad. Ah! <laughs> but suppose you didn't know that was a rubber snake. And you saw this snake <laughs> around there. <laughs> I was using it. Oh. How many understand the principle? And yet, how many times we look at something and think it's a snake, but it's a blessing in disguise? Don't you go away, you stay right there. Years ago, when I was having my self-pity parties, and I've had a few in my life, Andy, what are you hiding behind the Bible over there for? Look at it. See? I love you, Andy. I love you. I tell you, I love you. I just forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Pity party. How many's ever had a pity party? Yeah. I got rid of my potty the other day. I mean, a grown man sitting on a potty, this is ridiculous. Huh? How many still got their pity party? Don't raise your hand. I don't want to say. But see, God has grown us up. He's, he, his, his objective is... Sometimes he has to make us uncomfortable to get our attention. Oh, God's a good God. But he knows that he's got to get some of this foolishness out of his kids if they're going to make it through these last days that we are coming into. Are you listening out there? Do you realize what's happening in the world today? Do we understand that the devil has been turned loose? (sighs) 
How many wish they had obeyed their father and mother as you were growing up? Wow. You know, we've got to get some things straight in our minds because it says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance, in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. There's times I've, I've prayed like this, Lord, I told, I've, 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 Lord, I've already told you this, I don't know how many times, but I've got to tell you again. How many's ever done that? You, you get, what is God, why is he making me wait? There's a reason. Everybody say trust. trust. See, my Job said something, though he may slay me, yet I will what? Trust in him. See, once you can get that fear of death, once you can get that fear, once you realize that fear has been conquered, that fear will not move you to do something cowardly like. Can we understand that it's those fears that still are there that God brings to the surface by allowing us to be in circumstances or situations where we can give it to God? And God can sanctify that out of us. And now that fear is not there. And now you are as bold as a lion. Anybody listening to what the pastor's saying? Don't get all caught up because it's manifesting. Thank God it's manifesting. Well, I have this lust. Well, praise God. Is it coming to the surface? Yeah, it seems like I always want to do is lust. Now, I'm not just talking about sex. I'm talking about lusting after things. I think I've got at least a dozen pairs of shoes. When I was a boy, I had one pair of shoes, and they had a hole in the bottom. If I walked on marbles, I could count how many marbles were on the floor. I took war, safety war, and, and, and the, the, the tongue would flop, and I would punch holes with an ice pick and, and fix that and everything. Now I've got 12 pairs of shoes. I don't buy them. Susan buys them. She always thinks I need a new pair of shoes. No, I need a new pair of feet. <laughs> Not fussing, but I'm just saying. I don't have to worry about shoes. I got plenty of shoes. I, I tell you, I really love, I love to see Susan shop. She said, <clears throat> Dad, do you think maybe I could have this? I said, well, honey, if you need it, get it. But if you don't need it, don't get it. She seems to always need it. She always gets it. <laughs> and that's okay. We are, we're in a position in our life that, see, there was years that we couldn't get what we wanted. you understand that? you understand what God has blessed us and blessed us where if she wants an extra pair of shoes or a, a, another scarf, she, I know she doesn't need it. I, I, I told her the other day I was going to take our closets and our bedroom was going to be our closet and we'll sleep in the, in the closet. We need more room. We're, we're, Daddy, what do you want for Christmas? I don't want anything. I got everything. And the other day uh, I saw Michelle having one of these little carts. And, and I think, and, and then my daughter said, Daddy, what do you want for Christmas? I said, one of those little carts. <laughs> 1995 at uh, Sam's, I think it is, and Sears is 24 or something like that. So, you, you see, I need one of those little carts because, see, Susan's getting old, and, and, and you see, I can put her on that, and I can move her around, see? <laughs> see, and, and uh, I said, now, honey, I'll put you over here for a while. See, practical thinking, see, yeah, yeah. But don't worry about anything. Impossible. No, it's not. Not in God. Now, here's what I do. 
I said, Lord, I really worry about everything. I got to be honest. I'm an honest man. I worry about everything. But then I learned, and the Lord says, let me operate on you. I'll fix it where you won't have to worry about it. And now I'm free. Do you understand about being free? I think of that message that Willie preached. Concerned, concerned, but not worried. It's a difference. Because you see, you tear your health down. See, God don't want you to, to be anxious about anything because it just tears your health down. And you get all tight, like Rick said, and your heart begins to, to beat and, uh, and blood pressure goes up and, and you tear your whole uh, thing. Everything just goes to the pot. So don't worry about anything. But suppose you die. Heaven ain't too bad. Heaven ain't too bad. See, that fear, that fear is what we need to fear. <laughs> no, it's the fear that paralyzes us. What am I going to do? I don't know, but I know this. God said, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind at rest as you trust in Jesus. What a swap. Next verse, 7. Mm. And God's peace. See, God's peace. Everybody say, God's peace. God's peace. Shall be yours. That tra transical state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So we can come out of the state of fear and worry into the peace of God. And that peace of God will keep you calm and you can enjoy God's peace. You see, it ain't your peace. Are you listening? It ain't something you have to manufacture. It's God's peace that will keep you calm. It's God's peace. Come to think of it, that's one of the fruits of the Spirit, isn't it? Love, joy, and peace. Bob, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't say that. I'm 21 years old. I've been around a long time. I, well, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, 82. I can't believe it. The peace of God. How many makes mountains out of molehills? I said it again. How many makes mountains over, being honest back there, got an honest crew over here, make mountains out of molehills? Some little stupid thing that doesn't matter, and we make it like a mountain. <laughs> Honesty, that's good. And I've done that. I've done that. We've all done it at times. But praise God, when you learn <clears throat> the Bible says the disobedience of one person, Adam, made sinners out of all of us. But the obedience of one man, we've all been justified. So many times the way we act and respond to things can set off, listen to me now, can set off a lot of problems down the road by us just handling that situation in a peaceful and intelligent way. Because we learn in school cause and what? Effect. Effect. Cause and what? 
effect. Cause and effect. So we see all of this trouble. But very, very few people have wisdom to come all the way back here now. Rewind the tape. What caused all of that? I got all these problems in my life. And we're all caught up in all the effect. But what caused all of it? Rewind the tape. Boom. Oh. I can't believe. Your disobedience caused all this. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Don't get all worked up about the effect all the time. Learn that if we handle things according to the Word of God, all right, let's take this scripture, don't be anxious for anything. So you're a person that's anxious about everything. 20 years goes by. You're down at the uh, doctor's office now. You've got ulcers. They're bleeding. Your health is going to the dog. Well, let's rewind the tape. Oh, this one little thing here caused all of that problem. The effect. Now you're dealing with the effects. The manifestation. Not everybody's honest when I put them in the... Uh, sit down and counsel with them. What are we dealing with here? A cause or an effect? It could be the cause of somebody else that's making you live in this misery. Anybody ever experienced that? Yeah. So you got you got as wisdom grows in the people of God, we have got to realize there's certain principles that you can't change but you got to understand there's cause and effect I get in my car out there Susan couldn't find her keys this morning so she walked to church or she walked to the church or she walked to the church building she couldn't find her keys I wonder where they were at. In your pocket. <laughs> no, these are mine. <laughs> Susan, why couldn't you find your keys? How many's ever lost their glasses and they're on top of your head, yeah? Don't even wear glasses, but you sunglasses. Uh, yeah. Some things we wish we could change, but you can't. But God's got a remedy for that: forgiving and blessing. And God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Learning to live through the difficulty times, going God's way, you're going to come out on the other end much stronger. So don't be discouraged for what you're going through. I know when you go through these situations and your spirit is just tore up, it's rough. It's hard. And this is why we made the scripture sheets back there. Just go through them a couple of times, and I'll tell you what we have found. You get stronger every time. We had a, a, a young man came to our house many years ago. He could hardly talk. I said, what? I said what's the problem? What's that? I could hear back in those days. I, 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 
knew instantly that he had a wounded spirit. A wounded spirit who can bear. In other words, you can't bear anything if you have a wounded spirit. How many understands that? And that's why we have to put that shield of rejoicing, rejoicing, not allowing our spirit to get down. For we are spirit beings. And there are the enemy, our enemy is spirit beings. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ain't no need to fight anybody. If you do, you're in, you're in carnality. You're in the natural realm. We're spirit beings, and we have to take the spirit word of God and exercise it in our life and do battle against principalities and powers. But I think of the story about Peter, and, and, and Jesus said, i got to go to Jerusalem, and they're going to kill me. They're going to crucify me. Uh, the priests are going to do all this to me. Peter said, no, Lord, no, 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 Lord, no. And Jesus said, didn't say a word to Peter. Didn't say nothing to Peter. He said, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Do you understand what's coming against you? Have we not opened our minds enough that there is an enemy demonic powers in the atmosphere? Paul makes that very clear in Ephesians 6. And we have to put the whole armor of God on. And we have to fight. Fight! It is written. It is written. Take the sword of the Spirit. But the majority of the church, they don't know that. And I've preached it for I don't know how many years. Did you know what so-and-so said about me? No, and I don't want to hear because usually it's the enemy that's probably caused that person to say what they said about you. So being that I'm a spiritual man, I don't get mad at the person. I bind the spirit of darkness that's leading that person to open their mouth against me or anything in this church. And Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. And I say, Peter, get out of the way. If Jesus did not go to that horrible thing that he had to go through, we wouldn't have no salvation. Are you listening? See, they thought it was horrible. You take the story of Joseph. Joseph went through horrible times. A young man rejected by his brothers ended up in, in uh, uh, slavery in Egypt, sold as a, as a slave. I think it was 12 years uh, in prison, and, and the baker and the butler came in there, and, and they had this dream, and Joseph interpreted the dream for them. And, and Joseph said, now when you get up there, tell, the, tell Pharaoh that I'm down here, and I want to get out of this place. So the baker and the, and the butler, you know, one of them, of course, ended up, that means they killed him. And the other one got his job back. He forgot all about Joseph. Joseph who? <laughs> Bob who? <laughs> you can laugh, it's okay. Laugh's good for the soul. Two years later. But you know what? In all of that, Joseph forgave his brothers. Now, I want you to see something here. As God lifted Joseph from the dungeon to sit at the right hand side of Pharaoh, where are we seated? Right at the right hand side of the Father with Jesus. God has raised us all together to sit with Christ in heavenly places. I've seen people in church just, you know, how many know what that is? <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't get no higher than you already is. See, see God did that for you. See, Joseph, God did that for you. But when you're in the prison, 
you're in a hard time, rejoice, rejoice, because God's got a plan in your life. Even though for the moment it looks dark, it looks awful, you're feeling the pain, you're feeling the prison, you're feeling the loneliness, you're feeling every type of thing you can feel, you feel like you're deserted, but you're not. You're in the hand of God. You're in the hand of God. And I don't care what your husband does or what anybody does, you walk as God would have you to walk and he's going to have to face God. Or she'll have to face God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And that's how I've lived my life. And I've seen them come and I've seen them taken out. I've seen God take them out. I've preached their funerals. Because Susan and me walked straight before the Lord. God is our refuge. Our God Almighty is our shield and our buckler. And we will not fear what man will do to us, but we trust God in every situation. Let me tell you something. We used to have people come to our house. Susan would get up in the morning and fix food. And always, she'd always have food for everybody. The house got 70 people in the house, and we fed people, and God multiplied the food when we had our, our, the church in our house. And Susan and me today marvel all of the things that we've seen God over the years do. We trusted Him in everything. I say go with God. I'm going to say that again. Go with God, young people. Old people. Middle people. Big people, small people. Go with God. And God will go with you. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Don't fear it. Rejoice. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You're going to spend eternity in heaven with God in a glorified body. Never be sick again. Never have any pain anymore. We've got to see the glory that God has planned for us. That's all in the scriptures. These light afflictions, Paul said, light afflictions? Paul, are you kidding? Yeah, light afflictions worketh for us a much more greater weight of glory. Amen. Tell fear to go. Speak it. I command fear to leave me now. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead. Say it. Say it with, say it with authority. I command fear to go. You've got to open your mouth. And you've got to speak the word of God. And that's what the Holy Spirit has that he can deal with the enemy. It is written. I remember when the, I went through those two years or more than that. I mean, the devil had just on my case like nothing else. My head, the pressure on my head, I just wanted to die. And God said, Bob, you're going to lay there like a chicken with his head cut off. What do you mean, Lord? Didn't I give you a voice? Yes. I want you to learn to speak my word. I look after my word to perform it. I don't look at your moaning and groaning to perform it. I look at my word to perform it. But I need somebody on the earth to speak to these bones. Bones, can you live? You dry bones, can you live? We have to learn how God works and work with God and speak. Be God's mouthpiece. <coughs> or we got a choice. Go with the world. The choice is very simple. I was watching TV. I don't know if you got any of this on the, up there or not, but it's all right. We've got plenty of DVDs. <sighs> Sometimes I get in the heavenly rim and I forget all about the natural rim.
Can you imagine the pressure? And I worked. I did my job at the Air Base. And I pastored the church. And I helped other people in their affliction and they couldn't get delivered to myself in some areas. The pressure on my head. I'd come home sometimes and I'd say, Susan, just lay your hands on my head. She'd take a thought and it'd clear right up. Hmm. That's weird, isn't it? Must be demonic. Aha. Uh -huh. Discerning. So I'd go to work, come home pressure <laughs> loosen my husband you foul spirit of hell <laughs> I get my deliverance hmm. and God was saying now Bob <clears throat> when are you going to start learning to pray for yourself Ooh. so I had to learn to pray I had to learn to put on the full armor of God I had to learn to pay no attention to the mouths of people that would put me down and say all kind of things against me, uh, fill my uh, telephone uh, thing over there full of ugly stuff, cursing me out and saying I'm a no good so and so and ba 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 ba. See, none of you probably had to do, deal with any of that stuff, and but see, I had to walk through all that stuff and pray. But see, after a while, compassion. The Spirit of God takes over. You pass the tests, and He flows. And you pity, and you pray. You pray. You're clear all inside. You're free at last. Free at last of yourself. And then it's a whole new world. But I learned to pray. Frank and me had come down here on this altar, we prayed five years, or maybe it been six. We prayed every night, seven days a week. We prayed every night. We'd pray our hearts out for Israel. We'd pray our hearts out for the people of God. We prayed. We prayed for our own deliverance. We prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And now we are prayer warriors, fully ready to do battle against principalities and powers. That don't sound like church, does it? You ain't, you ain't heard nothing like that before, have you, son? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, I ain't mad at nobody. You know that, don't you? I ain't mad at nobody. You know that. But see, I'm saying you've got to learn that it's a spiritual battle. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We fight not against flesh and blood. Yeah. If you grab a hold of what I'm saying, you'll learn to be a prayer warrior. And I've seen God deliver people without me ever confronting them, they just changed like that. You see, the Bible says the God of this world has blinded the unbeliever from the glorious light of the gospel. Who has blinded them? The God of this world. Who is the God of this world? Satan. I've seen Bible scholars arguing with atheists. Atheists haven't been born again by the Spirit of God. They're in darkness. See, they've been blinded. Everybody say, they've been blinded? You can't expect a blind person to see anything. We understand that. Why are you? You better see. Open your eyes. You'll see. He can't see. But those that have been born again can see the kingdom of God by the Spirit. The Spirit has eyes. The Spirit is real in you. And it can be either strong or wounded and weak and can't bear nothing. Somebody ought to walk in here and say, now, everybody in here that believes in Jesus, they're, they're going to shoot you. Get out of my way. I'm the first one. You think I'm kidding? I've been tested. I've been threatened. My wife has been threatened. My wife has had telephone calls. We got your daughter. 
Now we're going to rape her unless you take all your clothes off. And Susan starts speaking in tongues. Right. Click. <laughs> oh, you want to be in my position? Are you willing to take what I have to take? Better think twice. I know that some of you have been through some hard times. Annie back there, look at her smiling. She's been through some rough times in her life. Her girls are smiling. I'm smiling. I can't help from smiling. <laughs> I've learned to rejoice in the Lord. And you know why we're in him? Because of him. How long are you going to live, Bob? As long as the Lord wants me to live, I will live. I live and move and, move and have my being because of him. And when that time comes for me to go, I'll turn it over to you guys and head out. But until then, you'll have to put up with me. Because <laughs> I ain't mad at nobody, and I've learned to rejoice in the midst of the storm. I remember one time when I'm going to close. My good heart, I've signed a lot of notes for people, you know. This guy at the air base years ago, and he wanted to buy a car, but he didn't have good credit. Oh, yeah, I'll sign it for you. I signed it. Well, about a year and a half or two years passed, I think it was, we got this notice from the finance company that I owed the finance company $400. Now, this was back in the 60s when $400 was probably about $2,000. And I took that. And I called my wife and my kids together, and we got on the floor. And we put it down there and said, Lord, we don't got no money to pay this, but we're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice and, and, and thank you, Father, for taking care of it for us. And then we begin to praise the Lord for all of his goodness and his mercy. You see, you see, you're dealing with somebody who knows this thing works. You see, I've been around 82 years. Listen, if I haven't learned anything, you guys ain't got a chance. Do, do you understand? I've been through every situation that you can be in. And I'm a survivor. I'm victorious because of him. I've learned to trust him. We got up from there and went about our business. Never heard from it anymore. Like it never exists. No. Nah. I signed a $3,000 one back then. That was probably about 6000 I think the guy made one payment, and he'd make no payments on it. They sent me that thing. Mr. Till, you owe $3,000. I did the same thing. Got the kids, Susan. We got down there. We prayed. And they kept telling us we owed the money. So I said, well, Lord, what can we do? We're maxed out right now. And so we prayed, and Susan felt like the Lord was saying, she better go get a job. So she, how many remember Grants? We used to have a store, Grants. She got a job at Grants, and that was at nighttime because I was home with the kids, and she would work, and she worked, and we paid off that $3,000. But even in that, we rejoiced in the Lord, Thank God that it's done. And I got money in my pocket right now. Where's my pocket at? Here, here it is. Right here. No, I got a bunch of keys in my pocket. But I always carry one of these. You never know, somebody might need a little salvation. And then, you know, sometimes your throat gets dry. But back here on the old hip. Got a few bucks to buy a hearty burger. God's been good. I've been through the desert. I've been through the valleys. I've been to the highest mountains. I've been out in the lake. When the wind was blowing, 
I've had my boat turned over and all the kids were down in the water. But my God sent an angel and he saved every one of us. I've been talked about and put down, deserted and rejected. But I know, I know in whom I have believed. And I will walk this faith until he comes and takes me home to old glory. In the meantime, I will rejoice with all my Hark! Devil, you were with that Calvary. I don't have to worry about you. I'm free, and I'm ready to go home and eat some vittles. Isn't God good? Be strengthened, my children. Be strengthened. Be strong in the Lord, for He is your strength. And now I praise God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you now that we're going to walk out this place blessing the Lord. Regardless of what we have to face, we do not have to face it alone. We just relax in you and watch you turn the pages of time. And you will make it all come out okay because we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.